Well, Mr. President, welcome back to the Oval Office of the White House. You've been a friend for a long time, a personal friend, and uh, you know my commitment to Israel is ironclad, and we share a deep friendship. And I want to thank you again for being here, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. It's always a great honor to be here in the Oval Office and to be with a friend such as you, Mr. President. I will uh, start, of course, with the sad news of the day. In the last two hours, two Israelis were mur murdered by rocket attacks from Lebanon in the t northern town of Naharia, a beautiful seashore town in the northern part of Israel. Early in the day, a kindergarten teacher of a kindergarten of special needs, children with special needs, rescued bravely and wisely the toddlers in the kindergarten from a drone attack, a drone exploded in the kindergarten. This is what we're going through from Lebanon, Mr. President, and you know it all too well. We are fighting hard. We are defending our people, our brave soldiers and pilots. And I know that you're working very hard to uh, make sure that this war will end and that we'll, there will be first and foremost security for the people of Israel as well as for the people of Lebanon. And in Gaza, we have 101 hostages. Over 400 days, I know, Mr. President, that you know you, you're day in, day out, actively seeking their surf, safe return home as they are going through hell in the dungeons of Gaza. Clearly, you're thinking and working about the day after as well, which perhaps should be a trajectory of hope to the people of the region and the ability to have uh, our neighbors, as well as us, live in security and peace. But first and foremost, we have to get the hostages back home. I agree. And it all starts in Tehran. It all starts in the empire of evil, <clears throat> where in Tehran, with its proxies, they are doing whatever they can to derail stability and security and peace, calling for the annihilation of the state of Israel and seeking nuclear weapons. And Mr. President, this has to be a major objective all throughout the, your term and the next term of the next president because we have to make sure that they cannot fulfill their evil intentions. They're also a major engine of anti-Semitism, Mr. President, and I know how much you put a focus on fighting and combating anti-Semitism. But most importantly, I'm here on behalf of the people of Israel and the nation of Israel and the state of Israel, to say to you, Mr. President, thank you very much. As we say in Hebrew, Toda Rabba. You've been an incredible friend of Israel and the Jewish people for decades. And we will never forget, ever in history, how you stood up with us in our darkest hour, which became our finest hour, how you came to Israel a few days after the barbaric attack of October 7th, how you helped us and supported us with words and deeds. And I want to express my, our heartfelt thanks to you, Mr. President, which is a great legacy that you stood up with the Jewish people and the State of Israel, as you always did. So I brought you a little gift, which is an archeological artifact from the uh, foot of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, which has the word Joseph, Yosef. And as you know, in the Bible it is said, that Joseph will strengthen Israel. And clearly, Mr. President, you've done it. Thank you very much. Well, I hope my father heard it. He, my father was what we call a righteous Christian. He couldn't understand why we didn't move more rapidly back in World War II and less. And uh, anyway. That, I, that was a great legacy with, of your father. Well, it was. And I remember how I got in trouble. We were friends even back then when I said, years ago as a senator, I said, you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. And I know you are. You're That's clearly good. a Zionist, Mr. President. Well, God love you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for being here, pal.